Join us next for stories of the risen Christ, alive and well and living in believers like you and me. Our guest today is Ron Matson, presenter of Evidence for the Exodus and president of Koinonia House, as he shares memories of the early days of Calvary Chapel, the Christian music ministry, and his first meeting with Malcolm Wilde, now pastor of Calvary Chapel, Merritt Island. Well, with us in the WRDJ studio is Ron Matson, president of Koinonia House Ministry. And Koinonia House has many resources for the serious believer to aid in his or her walk with the Lord and study of the scriptures. You can visit khouse.org online. And Ron and his lovely wife, Marcy, have been here at Calvary Chapel Merritt Island sharing a special presentation, Evidence for the Exodus, comparing the biblical narrative with the journey taken by the Israelites, led by Moses, as described in the book of Exodus, as well as in the book of Numbers. Ron has been in the pastoral ministry for 30 years and married to his wife, Marcy, for 46 years. God's taken them to many different countries around the world, some of which they have resided in. And we just want to welcome you, Ron. Well, well, thank you, Maureen. It's a pleasure to be here. With that kind of introduction, Ron will have, no doubt, a lot to say. First off, you have a history with Calvary Chapel Merritt Island and with Pastor Malcolm and Carol Wilde. So maybe you could clue our listeners into that. Certainly. Yes, those of you that can remember back to the 1970s, I went down to work with Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa with Chuck Smith in the early part of 1976. But actually, my introduction to Malcolm was before that. My wife and I, when we were dating, I discovered this wonderful album called Fool's Wisdom. And yeah. I think we we probably wore out many vinyl records and, and cassettes and, and so on and so forth and in just being absolutely mesmerized by this new emerging Jesus music, Malcolm and and his brother-in-law, Alwyn, of course, were producing stuff, probably less than six groups or albums in the world, which really preceded the whole Jesus movement music era. Malcolm wow. was certainly way out there in the, in the beginning. So I moved to Southern California. The nephew of Chuck Smith, a man by the name of Chuck Fromm, was taking over Maranatha Music at that point, And he knew me from Northern California, invited me down to be responsible for basically managing and, and booking all the groups. There were lots of music groups there at Calvary Costa Mesa at that time. So I came down in February of 1976. And shortly thereafter, we had a conference where we were having the leaders of these groups, along with some others, come and visit us for this conference up in the mountains. And Malcolm was invited to come from England. And so it was my opportunity to meet Malcolm there at the conference. And uh, of course, afterwards, he was going to stay for a week or so. And so back then, there were no cell phones, no way of contacting. So my wife and I were just recently married. This is about the about the August time frame of, of 76. And I show up and say, honey, I've got a guest. <laughs> and in walks Malcolm Wilde, which was, you know, huge, hugely exciting to us at that point. Because you were uh, already big fans. We were big fans. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were groupies to the to the nth degree. <laughs> and so there he was, live and in color. And uh, so he stayed with us and the friendship was forged. Shortly thereafter, I think probably by the end of the year, I was responsible for helping Malcolm and his family transition to and eventually immigrate to the United States. So we were the really? ones that met Malcolm and Carol and their family at the LAX airport. Wow. Uh, took them down to Costa Mesa, got them a house, got them furniture. And because we were going to be working together, I was responsible for taking care of the music groups and their concerts in the United States. And we wanted Malcolm to help us with his contacts, open up possible opportunities within Europe. And so the two of us worked very close together there initially. And then eventually by sort of 1978 or so began a, a ministry at Calvary Chapel, which was really the first vetted missionary organization at Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa called Spirit Wave. Malcolm might have mentioned it at some point, but we started this uh, the ministry. He did, and I came along to assist him. And so it began to take teams, you know, bands and teams to, to Europe, but primarily focusing on England and using his contacts. 
And so out of that, by sort of the early 1980s, there were continual groups going over, small teams, small bands. And then in 1983, we took a group of 50 people to Motherwell, Scotland, which was kind of our big event of taking people across for, for short-term missionary work. So I was organizing all of that. Malcolm took his band, the Mears. And so that began really the, the first thing out of Calvary Costa Mesa, which were team ministries never heard of, never done before. So Malcolm envisioned that, and, and I was just the, the quiet technical guy in the background that was trying to you know put together the actual details of it. So that launched a big interest in that type of ministry when the people got back. They began to say how the trip changed their lives. And up until that point, even Chuck Smith himself was not that keen on missionary. He was really focused on Calvary Costa Mesa. Mm -hmm. And so the outgrowth of that became the Calvary Chapel uh, Missions Fellowship, which continues to today. Uh, The Mission Magazine and whatever really grew out of that ministry that started with Spirit Wave, which was started by Malcolm Wilde. Wow. So that was really something new then at the time. Oh, very much so. It sounds like we're, you know, boasting. But the truth of the matter is that was an era where most things were new. We weren't even modifying things done elsewhere. I like to remind, you know, my children as they were growing up, as the styles of music was changing all the time, and they'd say this new thing, this new thing. Having grown up in the 60s, going to the 70s, I said, yes, my generation really invented rock and roll. You guys have just simply taken it and changed it. But we invented rock and roll. Well, the same thing true in terms of from our perspective at that point. Uh, The Jesus movement was bursting forth. Thousands of of people were coming off the beaches and kids were getting saved. And there were all these musicians. And of course, Malcolm, eventually his position shortly after arriving was to be the pastor of the Musicians Fellowship. They needed that steadying hand because uh, these kids were just sort of bursting on the scene. And at that time, all you needed to do was simply say there's a Christian band coming to, you know, some city and hundreds of kids would come. And so we needed to be careful that we weren't just promoting people who were ill-equipped. And so Malcolm had that responsibility. And that was his first real position at Calvary Chapel was as the pastor of all of the groups. And uh, then eventually that led to him being an assistant pastor at Costa Mesa. And uh, we continued until he moved here in 1984, January, I think, of 1984, uh, is when he resigned that position and and came out here to what was then Cornerstone Church and took over as a pastor in 1984. So we're coming up on uh, 40 years of him being here at at what now we know as Calvary Merritt Island. And we've kept in contact with each other. We've, We've done a few collaborative projects here and there, but it's been very pleasing to see how the ministry has continued to grow and the foundation of Sound Truth and all he does there. I I said in the meeting, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart, that as Malcolm ages and he still teaches with great vigor and power, I told the congregation last night, I hope you appreciate that you probably have one of the best Bible expositors in the nation right now. I'm not just saying that because he's a friend of mine. I think that there's a directness and a simplicity in his teaching that is not trying to be trendy. There was a point, and he probably would openly admit this, point in his life. Well, of course he was trendy. He'll talk about his gold lime suits and <laughs> so on and so forth. And But we expected that of him. After all, he was in America and he was English. He was our version of a rock star. But as, as time went on, he became more and more comfortable with the fact that his lead role was now not as a lead singer, but as not only a Bible teacher, but a pastor of pastors. And so him coming out here to Florida really brought the standard of Calvary Chapel all the way across the continent and planted what ostensibly at that time was was the first Calvary Chapel in the whole Southeast. And I think if you examined the movement from that period, that was the influence that began so many other like ministry, some of them Calvary Chapel, like ministries throughout the Southeast came as a result of what was broadcast in that sense here from Merritt Island. Right. And I think all of us here at Calvary Chapel, Merritt Island would agree that we are very blessed indeed. And the caliber of teaching that we have and the anointing that Pastor Malcolm has. And so we're very blessed. We would completely concur with that. Well, join us next time as Ron Matson shares about his friendship with Chuck Missler, his vision for ministry, his travels, and much more. You're listening to WRDJ LP 93.5 and WRDJ.com, where Jesus is the Word. <laughs>